five players. So in the game's files, there's unused data pertaining and hinting towards a fifth player. And likewise, uh, next to the unused files for the super guide icon, there's this one of a hand pointing. So it's believed that the game would have had a quote-unquote fifth player who exclusively used the Wii U gamepad in the touch screen, much like in New Super Mario Bros. Wii U, how there was that, like, fake additional fifth player they could have that would do that, and they would add the platforms to the screen as the other four actually played the game. Yeah, something like that, but it was ultimately scrapped. White Cat versus White Tanuki. So... Something that was carried over directly from 3D Land was the white Tanuki leaf and suit. And you know how it is, that's for uh, in case if you absolutely suck at the game, man. They give you this block as a pay thing, and it gives you a Tanuki suit, so you're invincible, but you just can still die on like Waffle and Bombs puts and stuff. And yeah, it's a permanent Tanuki suit, very handy, it let you uh, basically cheat through almost any level. But what's odd about this is that. It made sense in 3D Land because the Tanuki returning was the big highlight power up of that game. In this game, it's the cat suit, but there was no white cat suit. Instead, they weirdly took the choice to not use the signature power up of this game and instead carry over the 3D Land one, even though that maybe makes more sense for this. And I don't know, it's just another weird point of contention, like we're going from the last layer where it's like this sort of questionable design decision, but you can also kind of see it why, but it's still weird and there's just so many complicated feelings to have on it. However, even adding to it is that a white cat suit was added into the Bowser's Fury mode, which functions as you would expect it to, and I don't remember or know if the white Tanooki suit was in that, it's just, yeah, it was so weird. I wonder if maybe they did want to originally do this in the first release of the game, but maybe they just didn't have time and it was quicker to portal for the tanuki who knows no statue leaves and here's an additional thing to add on to the curiosity of this so because the white tanuki suit is in uh 3d world even though it doesn't fully belong arguably this makes it so that every power up from 3d land returned to its sequel 3d world except for the statue leaves now it can make sense because it's like well we already have the tanuki suit and it's not the highlight power up at this point anymore, it's the cat suit that's in the main star, so we had the lucky bells for that, and it makes the power up Tanuki obsolete. Are you following along with all of the repeated words I'm doing here? But as stated in the last entry, that's a weird choice because it conflicts with the reasons for the white Tanuki suit to be in here too, and I'm just gonna do us all a favor and move on from this mess, you know, let's just get on with it. Post game's overwhelming response of launch. Okay, so here's uh, interesting things to remind everybody, being that something that I probably only care about. When this game first came out, I remember everybody going on and on about the game afterwards. Ironically, it was kind of similar to what people were saying about Odyssey, but in a somewhat different way, being that, wow, this game's post game is huge. It feels like the game actually doesn't really begin until after you beat it and start doing that. And, People's minds are blown away at the amount of levels that were in here, and they're like, holy shit, how long is this game, and how many big things are here, and I remember people saying that this might actually be the best Mario game when it came out because of that, and I particularly remember getting curious and looking at it for a glance, and I don't remember who it was or if this video would still be up, but I remember seeing some sort of like Let's Play or Streamer. Uh, get to one of the parts of the bonus worlds, I don't know if it was World Crown or Mushroom or Flower, but I remember they landed in the rocket and they saw everything that was ahead of them, and in an exhausted tone, they were just like, oh my god, how long is this game? How long is this game? And it's such a weird oddity, because now looking in hindsight, it's like, yeah, there's a really good healthy amount of post game that's great, but it's not like this insane, overwhelming amount, and... Yeah, it's just such a strange thing to try to remember back on, and I hear nobody talk about this anymore or recall it. Lack of transition from World Mushroom to Flower. Another weird little thing that only people like me would care about is that there is none. Unlike every other world in this game, there is none. Now, you can kind of see the details, whereas like after you beat the levels in the first uh, World of Mushroom, It'll kind of open up a small, not really, bridge to flower, and the space floor is a different color, but 
you know, that's shit that you won't even notice at first, and you definitely won't notice uh, as you're playing it that you did change worlds until afterwards when you look back on and want to war or maybe just on yourself as you're walking through them, and... Yeah, it's just a, such a strange little thing that there was no sort of, like, bonus thing to connect in that they even bother naming them different worlds in the first place. I guess they wanted all three of the main power-ups, and this was just quickly slapped on, and... Yeah, just another strange thing. Mistakening 2-4 as the first level. This is another odd thing that I've seen everybody play this game do, where once they reach World 2-4, they're like, isn't this the first level? I thought it was weird, and... People completely forget about Super Bell Hills, and it's just oddly unremarkable in this game. Uh, this level feels way more memorable and way more like a first level than that. Now, this level was used in the demo, which probably explains a lot, and it was probably in the trailers more often too. Which might cause this, uh, Mandela effect, if you want to call it that. I know it's kind of a dirty word, but... Yeah, it's just a strange thing, because I strangely remember it this way to myself, and not just playing the game myself, but remembering back to watching, like, other playthroughs of it in specific moments. I was like, wait, wasn't this on this level when they first started playing it, this moment? But, yeah, it's an odd thing, and adding to it is that there's a remix version of this level where the clock is sped up later in the game that feels more appropriate to do as, like, a first world remix thing. To be like, hey, remember the first level? Well, now it's fucking crazy because you're in the post game, and yeah, it's such an odd thing. Like all of that, on top of it being the demo, makes me think that maybe this level, at least the first part of it before you go underground, was meant to be the first level of the game, but they changed it for every reason. But somehow it subconsciously stuck in everybody's minds like a weird SCP mimetic offense. Leftover propeller sounds on the Switch version. Okay, so one of the changes between Wii U and Switch, of course, I quickly said in the first part is that they had to get rid of the touchscreen and mic controls because that's not a thing that you can really do on the Switch, at least on Halo mode, and there's a microphone. Anyway, uh, there were the propeller platforms uh, which relied on the microphone gimmick where you could like blow into it to make them move, and in the Switch version they just move on themselves. Well, on the Overworld, uh, you can still see those platforms moving around on their own. And in the original game, you could hear very faintly a blowing sound effect and the propeller moving as that happened. And those are still in the Switch version, despite the fact that it's no longer how they work. Okay, here's an additional entry really quick that's not on the Esprit itself that I saw afterwards. So, apparently in the Wii U version, every level, as you expect, had a hidden Luigi in it. Except for the one where you unlock Rosalina, and they actually rectified this in the Switch version by adding a small Luigi on her crown once you meet her at the end of the level. However, this disappears after you beat the level for the first time and can never be seen again, so it's still kind of lost in a way, which is pretty weird. Okay, next up is the final layer.